Hey, so you want to make a tornado? That's weird, but anyway, here's how to make an easy one. First, delete everything. Let's start with the rendered network. Add an add sub, check add point, then use a convert sub to convert it into a particle and connect it into a geometry comp. We also need a camera, a render top, and a constant net for now. We'll get fancy later. Here is our point. Let's enable instancing. And instead of starting with something like a combo of a tube and a sprinkle sub, I'm gonna make use of polar coordinates which are extremely useful whenever you have to deal with circles. It's super simple, instead of using a Cartesian grid where every point has x, y and z coordinates, you can describe the point position as an angle, usually called theta, and a distance from the world origin. So we need a noise top to get our theta values, set amplitude to 1, offset to 0, period to zero. And don't forget to make it 32-bit float because we need negative values. Now let's add a GeoSL top and write some code. First, uncomment this line and get rid of this line. Now the GeoSL acts as a simple pass-through. In order to use polar coordinates, we need a radius. So let's do a uniform float radius and also declare it here on the vectors tab i'll leave it at 0.5 for now instead of using a vec4 we only need a single value so let's use a float call it theta and make sure we only sampling one value here so point r we are all set to convert our polar values into cartesian so Let's do float x equals radius multiplied by a cosine of theta. And float z is radius multiplied by a sine of theta. And let's output a proper vec4 using these values. So we'll leave y and alpha at zero for now. Now let's add a null and use it as a translate operator. If I rotate the view a bit, you can see we have something like half a ring. That's because we are dealing with radiance and whenever you need to get a full circle in radiance, it's probably a good idea to use pi. So set noise amplitude to math.pi. All right, to get from a ring to a tube, we need to set y coordinates. Of course, we could use an external ramp, but why bother? We already have a nice range of 0 to 1 in the included VUV variable. I'm going to use VUV.T instead of S to make this ramp vertical. There we go, a little tube made with nothing but simple math. There is one problem though, it doesn't look like a funnel, so good thing we can fix it with a simple ramp top. Connect it and set the type to vertical. Um, now we can sample another float, let's call it shape, sample from the second input. Now instead of using this radius right away, I'm going to make another variable, call it r, and it should be equal to radius multiplied by shape. Now use it to calculate our x and z values. And yeah, you can use this ramp to easily set the overall shape of a funnel. If you worry that it looks a bit too angular, set interpolation to hermit and dial the curve tension you want. We've got a funnel, now let's make it move. 
add another uniform variable, call it time. And set it to apps time dot seconds multiplied by two for now. And now remember, we already have the angle of every point and it's theta. So to make it move, you can just do theta plus equals time. We. You can obviously change the speed by adjusting the time parameter, make it slow or ridiculously fast. I'm going to stick with two for now. The only problem I have with this movement is that it's too uniform, where a real funnel would probably spin slower at the top, so we can multiply time by shape. And that's the opposite of what I was trying to do, so instead multiply by one minus shape. There we go. It's time to randomize things a bit. So insert a noise stop after the chill cell top, disable monochrome, set offset to zero and dial down the amplitude to something real small. You can also play with the period slider to change the way it looks. So far this funnel is super symmetrical in a way that a real tornado probably wouldn't be. Uh, there is an easy fix for that and all we need is another noise stop. Because our GLSL positions are packed vertically, we only need a single strip of noise to offset the funnel. So set the width of the noise top to 1. Just to make things a bit more visible, I'm going to use a fit top. Set the resolution to 256 by 256. Enable nearest pixel and set the fit type to fill. Oh, and once again, we need negative values, so set the noise top to 32-bit float. Connect the feed top to the third input of the GLSL top and let's sample values. We need two offsets for X and Z axis, so do VEC2 offset texture from the third input and sample R and G values. Now we can use it to offset X and Z positions, so plus offset X and here plus offset Y. And we've got a mess. That's because our noise values are too large, so we can dial down the amplitude. I'll keep it at something like 0 0.04. Now we can animate the noise to make it move. And you can see the whole funnel moves to the same amount where a real tornado would probably move a lot at the bottom and not so much at the top. We can simulate this behavior by inserting a composite top and multiplying the initial noise by another ramp. Don't forget to make it vertical. Now we can dial exactly how much we want the noise to affect the funnel offset at every height and here it's basically up to you to set your own values until you get something that looks believable enough. And these are just values I've come up with and also I decided to increase the rotation speed. That's it for the tornado. Now let's do something with the way it looks. Of course, you could set the alpha to something more transparent and that would already look interesting, but I want to use a fong mat instead. And everything went to black. That's because we need a light source. So add a light comp. There is another problem though. Uh, the fong mat is not really suitable for particles. We need another instant source. You could use a box or a sphere, but in order to keep the initial geometry simple enough so that we could use lots and lots of instances, let's use it lines up. Set the point B position to something close to zero. We've got lighting, but it still looks pretty flat, so let's enable shadows. 
I'm going to go with soft 2D and make the light brighter, something like 2. Uh, the only thing left now is to position the light and the camera and increase the number of instances by changing the initial noise resolution. Also, here is another little option. If you don't want your funnel offset to be random, you can use two ramps combined with a pre-order top to set it manually, and then you can animate the face. That's it. I hope you've liked this little tutorial. If so, don't forget to like this video and subscribe, but you already know all of that. So yeah, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.